I once went to a Seder meal on Monday, Thursday, and the pastor made several connections to the Passover. Can you refresh my memory and help me probe deeper into my understanding of this festival? Thank you, Nit, for that question regarding the Seder meal, which uh, some congregations have a tradition of celebrating on Monday, Thursday, in which they try and create the events of Exodus chapter 12, where we have the first Seder Passover meal right before the Israelites uh, leave uh, Egypt and go through the Sea of Reeds uh, in Exodus chapter 14. So what is the connection between the Seder meal on Monday, Thursday and uh, the Passover and how this would help us understand uh, more deeply uh, the connecting links, again, the typological links between the Passover of Exodus 12 and the Passover meal in the upper room the night in which our Lord was betrayed. What you have on the slide would be on the upper half, God, who has now become a familiar figure for us through these slides, delivering people in bondage as they cry out to him, and uh, promising on the right of the upper top of that slide a Davidic deliverer who will rescue his people once and for all. In between both of those promises would be a lamb, as you see it on our slide. And this tells us that as Israel celebrated the Passover, they would be looking backward and forward. Backward to, as the arrow points, to God's greatest act of salvation in the Old Testament, the Exodus. By the way, that great act is mentioned 125 times in the Old Testament. This is the gospel in many ways of the Old Testament. God delivering his people from Egypt, forming a community, offering a relationship, bringing them into the land. Exodus chapter 6. This is the name of God. But as they look back to that... They slaughter a lamb, and they eat unleavened bread, and they look forward to God's future acts of deliverance through the Star of David, you see there on the slide, as it is portrayed in that crown. To summarize this part of the discussion, subsequent generations of Israelites would celebrate the Passover once a year in the spring to recall their past and look forward to the future by means of a slaughtered lamb and the eating of bitter herbs, which we have in Exodus chapter 12, and the eating of unleavened bread. Those are the components of a Seder meal. Looking at the second, the bottom half of our slide, this is exactly the paradigm that is going on when you and I go to the Eucharistic feast of Holy Communion and in so doing, relive and reenact the Exodus Passover motif and in a Seder meal, this is very much brought home into our faith communities. So look at the bottom half of that slide. We do not recall God's deliverance of Egypt, but we do see on that slide that through water there, you see the drop of water, God delivered us through baptism, just like he delivered Israel through the water of the Sea of Reeds. He delivered us from ourselves, from Satan there, you see the picture of him, and from death, temporal, spiritual, and eternal. We look back as we celebrate the Eucharist on what God has done for us in our baptisms. And through the slaughtered lamb there, as you see the lamb now with the cross 
in the background, we receive the Savior's true body and blood. And we look forward to not our Lord's first coming, as they did in the Old Testament. We look forward to his second advent, when he will separate the sheep from the goats, believers from unbelievers, and bring us into that heavenly promised land. I hope you can see again the organic connections we're making from Old Testament to New Testament. That to understand a Seder meal, the unleavened bread, the bitter herbs, the eating of the lamb, one can only find the beginning and the foundation in Exodus chapter 12.